What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Um, I'm here in Denver, Colorado, back at the lab, and it's 16 days into our 2022 breeding project. So I just wanna say that I appreciate everyone out there who's following along. Um, I'm really excited with some of the results that we have here, and um, I'm super excited to see what, com what mushrooms come out. So today's video, I'll just do a quick recap of um, what we have to work with here. If you haven't seen our immaculate inoculation video um, on uh, Christmas Eve, I inoculated 20 plates with um, spores from different uh, mushroom species and different methods for inoculating with the spores. And I'll do a quick recap here because we've got some really nice results and I'm excited to go on to sectoring and choosing the healthy mycelium from our initial spore plates to move them onto fresh agar plates before they go into grain. So that is what a lot of people call sectoring um, or it's just selection for different phenotypes from spores. All right, so um, I'll start off real quick, brief overview of this uh, peroxide plate. So I treated um, some of the contaminated plates. Out of all 20, we had about four plates from the blue oyster be contaminated with bacteria, and then maybe about one or two more plates with a single bacterial colony that I'll show you in a second. So this is um, the difference between the PDA plates. This one was treated with peroxide uh, about three days in, and then this one was left to um, its you know, own demise. I just wanted to see if any mushroom colonies would appear over a couple weeks, and we're still waiting. Um, I'll still um, leave these plates for another week or so to see if any mushrooms will develop, but you can see that the hydrogen peroxide did get rid of the bacteria um, that was present. And then if you look at the, uh, the MEA plates here, this is the peroxide treated plate and it had some suspect mushroom colonies that never really developed. Um, but then this is the untreated plate and you can see there's definitely some trichoderma. So that's this green mold right here. And then um, it looks like there's more of that same bacteria that was untreated with the peroxide. So no mushroom colonies yet on um, these four contaminated plates. It looks like the peroxide cleaned up one of the dishes, but we still don't have any mushrooms yet. So that was probably the, uh, the worst out of the 20 plates. And then I'll go through the rest of our results. So um, Enoki, Shiitake, and Lion's Mane, still no growth. However, you can see that there's no contamination. So that means that the spore prints were relatively clean and we're still waiting for these to germinate. So this was um, an enoki streak. So I did a spore swab and went onto the Petri dish without hydrating um, those spores. And I think that's going to cause a little bit of a delay in the germination of those spores. So the shiitake, um, I did hydrate these, but we are still waiting on spores from the shiitake as well as the lion's mane. So you can see these plates are still clean, which means that the spore print was relatively clean. Um, they were a little bit older, about a year old, so they might just take some time before they germinate. So I'll set those plates aside, but there's 12 more plates that were not contaminated going from a spore solution into uh, an agar culture. All right, so then we've got our local Colorado oyster, and there was a bacterial um, colony that started to form but if you look closely you can see the different mushroom colonies so this one's already contaminated I'm not going to use it 
So I'll just open this up to give you guys a really good view of what's happening. So if you notice these colonies up here above this bacterial colony, they are more three dimensional. So they're raised up. They have the longer mycelium spreading as opposed to um, this colony here that is more dense. You don't really see the filaments spreading away from it. But that right there is the difference between a um, bacterial colony and a mycelium colony. All right, so I'll set that one off to the side and you can see all of these different colonies forming. So there's a small chance that some of these single colonies can be haploids, which means they only have half of the genetic material. So this is a perfect time where you can isolate some of these smaller colonies on the periphery, put them onto their own auger plate, and then you can use those strategically to carefully cross with all the rest of the subsequent oyster haploids, and then you can um, carefully breed that way. But if you notice some of these colonies here that are touching, and look at how robust they are compared to these smaller colonies on the outskirts. And to me, that suggests that these colonies have already mated. So I can go ahead and select a region of that mycelium, and chances are likely that that one would fruit out with mushrooms. The only way to tell is to actually grow them out, but this is a really nice set of plates to show how you can isolate different haploid cultures. All right, so now we'll move on to the golden oyster, and this is really exciting. So you can see all of these different branches of mycelium kind of coming out of this main culture here. So because the spores were so concentrated when they were on this plate, they kind of all germinated and mated with each other in this region right here. And the stronger cultures are going to extend towards the periphery. And that is where we are going to sector our phenotypes from. So I hope that makes sense. This plate had less spores, so there's more isolated cultures. And then this plate had a really high concentration of spores, and we're going to take different regions from the edge to create different phenotypes. So the same thing with the Foliota Namico. So this is the Namico with tween, and this is without tween. So you can see the difference there, very similar. But once again, it looks like we have a bunch of overlapping cultures. So the ones that are starting to segment apart are probably already diploid. They're already mated. So I'm going to take small regions of this and put them onto their own Petri dishes to establish their own phenotypes. So I have some really nice Namikos that I can test run and this one's kind of cool because you can see some isolated colonies here and then some regions where colonies have overlapped and the darker mycelium is probably mated pairs. And then we've got our brown oyster which is looking very similar to the golden oyster but you can see how clean these plates came out. I don't see any contamination except on this uh, brown oyster here, which we marked earlier, but that kind of shows the importance of marking that contamination because you can see the mycelium grew right over that bacteria. And if I hadn't marked it, I could have possibly taken a wedge there and expanded that bacteria to the next phase. So I wanna focus over here, which is far away from the bacteria and that way I can collect cl 
clean and healthy mycelium. All right, guys, I will flip this around so you can watch me as I segment all these different phenotypes onto their own Petri dishes. Also, before I went to um, sectoring, I wanted to show you guys how the spore solution culture is looking. This is the King Strafaria, and you can see the solution's nice and clear, but we've got some mycelium definitely growing, so I'll throw that on the stir plate. And then this is our cordyceps, which you can see some tiny little colonies starting to form as well. So two out of the three um, spore into liquid culture appear to be healthy, and then about 14 to 16 of the 20 plates appear to be healthy. So I'll set up the tripod and I'll put on my lab coat and go through some transfers from the uh, spore germinated plates onto fresh. I'm going to use MEA because they all look pretty healthy on the MEA plates and that's my, um, my favorite dish to store long term. So I will um, flip this around and go through okay, that. Okay, so my incubator holds about 50 plates. I'm going to do 10 dishes per strain. So 10 different phenotypes potentially for um, all five different strains. And if I wanted to be super careful, I would use a fresh blade or um, flame torch them between each plate. But I'm just gonna use one blade and one scalpel per transfer. And then I'll show you guys what to look for in the next um, step in our next video. So this is just focusing on sectoring out different phenotypes and transferring them onto fresh plates. All right, guys, so this plate right here is a really beautiful example of all of the different phenotypes that could morph from one single petri or one single spore print. So look at the variation between all the different mycelium. This is all from the same spore print. So then I wanted to show you guys the summer oyster. So this large one in the middle appears to have been mated and you can tell how healthy and rigorous it is compared to some of these other weaker colonies on the outskirts. My gut tells me that this one here probably has not mated yet so it's just a haploid but I'll go ahead and sector off um, that larger colony and then I'll and indicate the rest of them as being isolates. Then if we look at our golden oyster plate, you can see the mycelium on the very outside. And I'm going to take the healthy parts of that mycelium and transfer it onto um, these fresh plates here along with the brown oyster. So I'll go through the summer oyster first and then the golden oyster and then I'll kind of do an overview at, after that. So first, I just like to spray my hands with some isopropyl alcohol. And when I'm doing the summer oyster, I'm going to be very conservative and kind of cut from the outside so that I don't have to change my blade every time. But this is probably not the best way to do it. If I would prefer to change blades out or flame sterilize um, every time. Okay guys, so I'm first going to select for what appears to be a mated colony. And then I'll just go ahead and transfer that onto a new plate. And then I will call this one Summer Oyster 1. And then an M indicates that I think it's already been mated. So I'll just fruit this one out right on the green after this. And today is the third. 
then I'll do the same thing with the colony right next to it because I have a feeling that they'll both be pretty close genetically. And I'll call this one Summer Oyster 2. And then M to indicate mating. And then it's the third again. So then, there's a few other colonies on this dish that look pretty promising. So I'll go ahead and select a couple that I think are probably in the top 10. So definitely that one in the corner. So these will be isolates or haploid colonies presumably, and I'll try to just select that single colony, and then that will be isolate one. This one looks pretty cool, how it's sticking way out. I think that if, if it reaches way out like that, it might be a good pinner looking for oxygen. So I like to select for some of the, the weirder ones, like this one here. left. This one has some nice colonies. Okay, so that is the summer oyster one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll just finish that with eight. And then these are summer oyster isolates. So then once these ones grow out, I'll strategically cross them with each other to produce mated pairings like these ones and then while that's happening I'll fruit these out to see if they're in fact mated pairings already and then these ones I'll kind of let those grow out and then maybe we'll get some future mated pairings out of them but for now we have two mated pairing pairings then we have eight different isolates. And now I'm going to go into the golden oyster. So this one's different because it had a much higher concentration of spores. So you can see all the different mycelium at the edge. And that is what we're going to select for. So I've got this contaminated plate that I'm not really going to mess with that one. Um, but then this PDA and the PDA with tween both 
have some healthy colonies as well. So I'm going to try to select about 10 different regions and there's a chance that maybe that whole colony is one phenotype that took over. But regardless, I'm going to shoot for the healthiest regions and transfer them onto this plate or this stack of dishes and then I'll label that um, mated pairings 1 through 10 and then this will go through the fruiting chamber. So once again, wipe my hands off. And I hope I can get a really clear shot. So that's going to be isolate or mated pairing one. So golden oyster M one, and then today's date. And I will go through and select a different region. Maybe I'll come over to this PDA plate. And this region looks really strong right here. So I'll take my chances. And hopefully that's a good phenotype. And I'll go through and finish up the rest of these and label them accordingly. Right, guys I hope you enjoyed that video on sectoring different phenotypes um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you're looking forward to more um, videos like these and I'll give you updates as all these different phenotypes progress but I hope I got a clear shot of what I'm actually doing during this procedure so there's a difference between collecting isolate haploid colonies and already mated pairings and the difference really stems down to the concentration of spores that you put onto the petri dish. I hope that makes sense. Um, comment below if you have any questions. Um, check out our Etsy Fresh Fungi. We're loaded up on cultures and we're about to um, release some new strains as soon as these um, give us some good yielders. <laughs> All right guys, um, thanks again for watching and until next time, much love.